Bill Wilson, co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, talking on The Singleness of Purpose, 1957. Now we're running into what we call uh, the dual uh, purpose growth. And uh, we're running into this question of what we're going to do with people who have related problems. I've got a hell of a, a queer sex problem, I'd say. Or we got a divorce problem. Or we got a narcotics problem. Or we got a gambling problem. Or we're too fat. Or we're nervous. We got an erotic problem. Well, around in AA, uh, we got people with all those problems. I guess I got all of them myself. Uh, however, I am a drunk and you're a drunk. So the basis of the primary basis of my identification with you is the hell of a time I had drinking and the wonderful time I've had getting over. Which has involved, however, was dealing with some of these underlying problems which we already had. So now, as you know, there have been a great many uh, uh, sort of offshoots or copies of AA, some faithful facsimiles, some not so much so. We have Neurotics Anonymous and Gamblers Anonymous and Addicts Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous and Divorcees Anonymous. And we have uh, some uh, organizations that deal with mental cases like uh, Recovery Incorporated and We Are Not Alone in Society. And some of these people begin to do very well and uh, they're far off from <coughs> Now some of our members go over to these other people to help them and to be helped. And that is fun. But now, again, comes the old problem that we had with the clubs, with the family, with the education. Now we want to be married. So, uh, let's say I'm a narcotic addict as well as an alcoholic. Well, we got around in AA. A lot of people have had trouble not only with pills, but with morphine. I mean, a genuine addict. They identified with us. They joined us because they were also alcoholics. But naturally, having had the addiction problem, too, they know the awful agony of that. They want to carry this message to the pure, straight addict. So, in some cases, they've tried to bring those people to AA meetings and bring them into full membership. Well, right away, the wheels begin to grind, because are we going to take on all of the world's problems, and can anybody with a problem join AA? No, we decided long ago... AA was for a drunk. No matter what complications the drunk has and how many other problems, we don't care anything about that. The only thing we want to know is you're drunk if you want to get over it. And, uh, and we'll stick to that. But now comes the guy with the current narcotic problem. He comes to an AA group and he says, well, I want to belong. Well, under group autonomy, this group can really do about as it likes. You can, you can say to them, well, uh, uh, we only deal with alcoholics here. Or you can say to him, well, look, you can come and sit in an open meeting and maybe you'll find a few friends around who've also had the narcotic problem who can help you start a narcotics group. Or maybe we're going to put you up on the platform and let you give a narcotic testimony and we're going to put you on the committee and we're going to take you right in. Well, this last mention, of course, just doesn't work very well. Because if a, if, a, if a straight narcotic, let us say, is to become an AA member, he has to be capable of doing AA 12 step work. He has to be capable of doing AA committee work, and he has to be capable of making an AA pitch from a platform, and how the hell can he if he's a narcotic? He can't. So that it is my hope that where there are good-sized open meetings, that AA members, who themselves have had a narcotic experience and wish to work with narcotics should certainly be permitted to bring these people in as visitors to get the fish. With the idea that they may be able to start their own group, but I don't see how we can go any further with that. And the group is the, is the last word on the subject, though. The, the, the group can do what it wants. Now then the question comes, if you've got in an institution way, You've got a peculiar condition where uh, they can't have but one meeting a week, the AA group. And here are a lot of narcotic people. 
And here are people that are just a plain crime problem and other problems, and they see these drunks getting so much better emotionally and say, how do you do it? And you go to the warden, and maybe the group goes to the warden and says, well, can't these other people come to our meeting? Or can't they have separate meetings, and can't we help them out? The warden says, no, you can't have separate meetings. You just have one meeting, meeting a week. And it would be great if you'd have these people in. Or I'm telling you, I'm putting them there. So, okay. So in comes a guy with a sex problem, with a narcotic problem, uh, with a burglary problem, <laughs> or whatever it is. And he sits down with the AA group in the meeting. Well, I say, what out? The only thing that that group must do is to say, we're the AA neurotic group, or we are the AA burglary group. See? <laughs> if that group is going to be listed in the directory as an AA group, these other people have got to be visited. Then when they go out, there isn't any guarantee that uh, you're going to receive a guy who was just a plain yegg that never drank any grog. Maybe he would be received as an open meeting, maybe not. I, I, I don't know. I think that's up to, to each group. Now, you see, there are these borderline cases, which are not matters of shifting the AA tradition around. It's just a reasonable application. And again, it's this middle course. Of it. You can take the course... We'll have nothing to do with anything whatever but a drunk. A pure drunk. Well, in the first place, there ain't any pure drunk. <laughs> but all these things are able to drunk. Or you can take the attitude, AA is going to save the world, let's bring them all in. Now, how do you apply the AA tradition of the single purpose of AA and the no-endorsement idea of AA and the group autonomy idea of AA if you take those three, three traditions? you can work out fair application, which will make what we know available to these other situations as groups, and at the same time, not get us married and compromised, uh, which might ruin us. Because I think that it is a fundamental, running all through government and through all forms of society, that your first function is to preserve your own entity. Let us first preserve alcoholics and honor. Then next, let us, as individuals, do what we can for the world around us.